Hello and welcome to Between Two Electrodes, an educational series for energy professionals. I'm your host, Jennifer Alfson, Product Marketing Manager at Fluids. In each series, I'll interview subject matter experts on interesting industry topics. In this series, we're going to focus on energy security in Europe. I'm joined today by Lars Stefan, Senior Manager of Policy and Market Development at Fluids. And our special guest is Gerard Reed, co-founder of Alexa Capital and co-host of Redefining Energy podcast. Before we begin, Gerard, can you share a bit about your background in the energy industry? Yeah, I've been, I've been in the industry for nearly 20 years, but really coming from the financing side. So I spent a lot of that time as an analyst. Um, and I also then um, was a portfolio manager running a, an energy fund. And for the last 10 years, I've been working in corporate finance, which means you're advising companies on raising money, you're advising them on projects and uh, and infrastructure planning and stuff like that. That's what I'm doing. So I've been at this. I've been at it for a long while. A veteran, I would describe myself now at this point. Well, we're lucky to have you on with us today. So thank you. And Lars, same question to you. What is your experience in the energy industry? Yeah, thanks, Jennifer. So I started my career in political communication, and but about nine years ago. Um, I joined a very young energy storage company, which was then really a very small sector and have been dealing with uh, energy regulation policy markets since then. And now I'm doing the same at Fluence. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gerard and Lars. My first question for you, Europe is currently under an unprecedented energy crisis. What does this mean and how did we get there? Yeah, it has been probably 2022, the most unbelievable year in energy, certainly since the oil crisis in the 1970s. And what I mean by that is we've, we've had a shortage of energy uh, in the system, mainly caused by the Ukrainian Russian crisis. Um, but there's also been other issues as well. But the result of not being enough gas in the system is that that has had knock on effects on all the other fossil fuels, including electricity prices. And we've seen incredible volatility in commodity prices and power prices, which has made it very difficult for everybody concerned with energy. And volatility in the energy sector started in late 2021. What happened then? I'm actually glad you said that because most people sort of put it down to the Ukrainian crisis, but it started before that. And the reason it started in 2021 actually was because Gas demand, particularly from the Chinese, um, went through the roof. And the result of it suddenly was that there wasn't enough gas available. And what that suddenly meant was that gas wasn't available. The gas coming into Europe, we were suddenly in competition with China, with, with Japan, with South Korea, and the price went up. And actually, gas prices went up, and that actually also brought electricity prices up. So that was the start of it. Why is gas so important to the energy system in Europe? Well, two reasons for that. One is primarily it's used for heat, right? Um, that's if you, if you took whether you're whether it's in industrial processes or in the domestic home or in our commercial buildings, nearly everybody in Europe relies on gas for heating. That's the first point. But the second point is in the power market, what you actually do is um, the electricity price at any moment is determined by the most expensive power generation unit that goes on at that particular moment. And actually, in the environment that we've been in the last 12 months, it's been gas. And so gas has been determining the power price. And of course, the gas price has gone up, so the power price has gone up. So gas has had, that has had a, a really big impact in terms of the energy system. And as I said, there's been scarcity of gas, which means, yeah, We've seen extreme movements in gas prices. But again, not just gas, because guess what? What's the alternative to gas? Well, it's burning coal. We also saw coal prices hitting all-time global highs last year. And again, that's just an example of one of the sort of knock-on effects of, 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 of what would been going on in the gas markets. What are the other contributing factors? Well, listen, I think the major one is what's been going on in France. And what's been going on in France is that they've had ongoing problems with their nuclear plants. Um, it got so bad that it, at one point in 2022, 
Um, France had half of its nuclear power plants out, and it was really importing on a day 20% of its electricity needs. Now, you say, well, so what? You know, they're just importing it from their neighbors. Well, France used to be the biggest exporter of power in Europe, and then suddenly it became the biggest importer. So what that meant was the French problems in nuclear suddenly became a European problem in electricity. And don't forget, we also had the gas problems as well. So the result of this was that we saw gas electricity prices at levels we've never seen before. So um, if I if I take sort of the the beginning of December, we saw power prices right across Europe at 400 euros a megawatt hour. Now, normally, they'd be at 50 or 60, right? Um, and that, of course, then has a knock-on effect on the customer because the customer has to pay for that whether it's an industrial customer, a residential customer. And that's sort of, I would say, the core of the crisis is this you know, problems in the gas caused by the whole Russian-Ukrainian situation and then problems the French nuclear system. And what was Europe's reaction to this crisis? That's a very, very good question. I would say um, disbelief. I don't believe that the politicians or the legislators across Europe at the beginning, I'm talking about sort of going back to March, April 2022, they didn't realize the significance of the issues in front of them. And it really was only when it came to sort of September where they aggressively went into the markets and actually made decisions that were needed to make sure that we have you know, enough electricity and gas to get through the 2022-23 winter, and actually even the winters beyond that. So that was the that 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 was the first thing. The good news is that we did get through 2022 unscathed, but there still is a big question about what the future is because the reality is um, there is still a shortage of gas, right? And what are the consequences of not addressing these issues? Well, the issue that we and it's very difficult to dash, uh, address is gas. We have, Russia is the biggest supplier of gas into Europe and suddenly we're not getting most of that gas. It's not being delivered to us. So that's a supply shock. So actually to try and move away from Russian gas, what you need to do is reduce demand very quickly or go to alternatives. And I think we've done a very good job in terms of reducing demand. Uh, certainly customers, whether they're residential or industrial, you can see you know, the higher prices have had an impact and plus moves by governments to sort of ask their, uh, the citizens and companies to reduce demand have worked. However, I don't think we've done as much on the supply side as we need to. Um, and the issue on the supply side is that you do need infrastructure to do it. Now, the good news is if I take what Germany did, Germany went and, for example, they got their hands on a floating LNG terminal, which enables them now to bring LNG gas in by ship from other countries. That's a big step forward, but there are other um, alternatives that could have been put in place that have been just blocked by different countries, right? I'm curious, we've had instances in the United States um, that have become life or death situations in terms of energy supply, energy security. Is this a life or death situation in Europe or could it become one? Sorry, firstly, it could become one. To date, it has not. I think I would say that the energy industry has done a very, very good job of keeping the system up. But let's be clear, if, you know, if, if we don't have electricity for three days, our societies fall apart, right? Because you suddenly can't do anything, right? You can't pay for anything. You can't, uh, you can't heat your homes. You can't work. I mean, that, we, it, we, that, that's the biggest issue is if you don't have electricity. And actually you're seeing this to a certain extent in Ukraine today, right? Because the Russians have been attacking their electricity system. Electricity is what you can't deal with. And we also saw that obviously in Texas as well, right? Electricity is a must have going forward. Uh, and I actually can do, I can do without gas, I can do without oil, I can't deal without electricity. So that's the big learning I would think out of this is just how important it is to have resilience in the electricity system and to make sure we have 24 seven power. 
Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Gerard, for giving us this great overview on the situation of energy security in Europe. To our viewers, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this discussion, please check out the rest of the videos in the same series on energy security. And don't forget to subscribe to the Fluence blog to check out the other segments in our series of Between Two Electrodes. Thanks and have a great day.